Hello everyone, this is Kim um, from Country Craft Creations Design Team. Um, I have a project to show you today using the Authentique Jubilee Easter Paper. Um, it's kind of a quick uh, project, but the end result is cute and it is easy to give as a gift also. Um, so let me walk you through what it looks like and then I will um, show you how to make it. It's really easy. So this is a six by six little booklet um, and I just put it together real quick. Um, my closure is a tie here with the seam binding. So let me undo that so you can see the front page better. This flag is the stickers that I mounted on cardstock. These buttons came from the store. They're cute little carrots. And then I just uh, trimmed off the back with my Tim Holtz scissors. I put a little bow on the rabbit's neck. Um, the authentic paper always comes with a quote, so I cut that out and mounted it on some paper and put it down at the bottom. It says, here comes Peter Cottontail, right down the bunny trail. And I put some trim. Um, this is a sticker uh, and two buttons. And when you open it, it's a trifold. So there's a left-hand side that has a pocket with um, one of the cut aparts left open as a pocket. And I just put a little tag in there. This side pocket has a pretty good sized mat that I put in there and you could put more than just one in there. I left this pretty much empty because I really like the paper um, and I just put two little stickers in the corner. And then this side opens also and it mimics the left hand side. So I have another pocket with a tag behind the cut apart and another matted piece of cardstock. And again, you can put more here. I left the carrots page empty, thinking that would be a great one for a focal point for a picture. This opens to the left. And I have just a little, um, use my Martha Stewart punch to make a little bit of a pocket and put one of the cut aparts in there. Just slid that in. Made a belly band with this um, paper and then I mounted one of the stickers. It's one of my favorite stickers ever. So cute, so cute. Um, so this actually, let me find a cut apart. This can hold a picture or it can just hold a note. It could hold um, a cut apart, whatever. And then this opens to the right and it has the same on the right hand side as the left. So it's kind of hard to get a full view. And I use my Martha Stewart punch to make a pocket, put another one of the cut aparts in there. And then I made a back pocket where, again, you could put more than one. And I just matted the front. Okay. And it just closes up real nice and easy. It would be a great gift to send in the mail. And what I did was, now I, I want you to excuse this before you see it. I love the blue fern chipboard, the cut, um, yeah, the chipboard. And when you get it, it comes like this. There, were, um, This one's two eggs that came together. And it's, you know, a cardboard color. Well, I wanted mine to be colored. So I tried to take the shortcut. Don't do the shortcut. And I used marker and then tried to put some glitter on top of it. It did I don't like the way it turned out. So I'm not going to cut corners this time when I make this one. I will paint this with some acrylic paint um, and then put some glitter on. So when you see the one I'm going to show you, it looks kind of childish because it didn't turn out very good. So don't do what I did. Uh, so here is the envelope then. Um, I just made a flag that says Happy Easter with a, with a sticker. This is the egg. Oof, I'm embarrassed to show you, but it'll be for one of my kids. They don't care. Um, and I did not put paper on the sides of this, and or nor the back. Uh, and this fits in there nice and neat. I'm not going to tie it, but... And then to close it, I just tuck it behind... Um, there we go. And so that is, I don't like that closure very well. It, this is such a big envelope that it's kind of hard. I might have to change how I close that. But anyway, that is the envelope box that I would give it to somebody in. Okay, so ugh, don't look at that. 
So let's get cooking on this easy project for Easter. Um, let's start with the base. And for the base, you need two pieces of paper, one at six by 10 and one at six by nine and a half. Now you want the total length to be 18 and a half inches when you put the two together. So this allows for a one inch overlap, okay? Now the reason why I didn't do a six by 12 and a six by uh, like nine is because, or eight, uh, eight and a half, is because when I overlapped them on my first project, the attached part ended up in the wrong spot. And so I ended up, it was hard to score where I needed it to. So I want this to be more in the center and that's why I made them six by 10 and six by nine and a half. So don't go six by 12, like I said, because then your attack, it goes to the wrong spot. Okay, so again, look at that if you need to, freeze it if you need to. So I'm going to use uh, one fourth inch score tape. And what I'm going to do is lay this on my mat And I'm going to use the guides to help me see where 18 and a half is. So I'm going to lay this down. Um, you can't see the edge of my mat, but it's at the very beginning. And so this shows that it measures 10 inches to here. So I'm going to place this on top and look at my end until it lines up with my 18 and a half inch mark. Oh, let me get this on a line. So I get it nice and straight. Okay. All right, so I need to use my grid. So I'm gonna place this on top and I'm gonna look to see where it lands at 18 and a half, like so. And it's pretty close. And here's what I'm gonna do make sure I get my tape in the right spot. I'm just going to put a pencil mark right there at the end so I know how far over to overlap. Okay, so I'm going to put tape on the back of one, tape here, and I'm going to overlap it till it goes to that line. That's how I do it anyway. So I was going to use one fourth. Maybe I'm going to use three eighths. I think I just changed my mind. So I'm going to, uh, on the six inch side, I'm just going to place some score tape and I'm going to place the other score tape right up against this line that I made. Okay. So that it sticks together real well. Alrighty. Press down to make sure your score tape is adhered real well. And I'm going to overlap it just like so. Oops. Have a little bit of overhang of tape there, so I'm just going to pull it over and take off the score tape backing. I use my grid a lot just to try and keep everything lined up nice and neat. Ugh, if I can get it to be in the right spot that I want it. Okay, so I want to go right up to that line. And I'm going to press down real well. I'll probably I'll use my Teflon score tool or bone fold. You know what though? I did. Look what I just got. I got these from the hardware department so that I can do a little bit of this instead of using, this is just a cheap tool. So we'll see if it works for me. Okay. So now this is 18 and a half inches long and let me just double check because I don't want to start scoring and have it be wrong. All right. Pretty stinking close. So let's get our scoreboard. And this is going to seem a little bit different maybe because it's so long we have to uh, score a little bit differently. So we are going to score at six inches uh, with the 18 and a half inch going across. So six inch, uh, inches. 
and then we're going to move over to six and one fourth. Okay, and that's going to be our little gusset. So now we want this middle piece to be six also. So because it's long, what I do is I'm going to go ahead and score where I just, I'm going to uh, burnish right where I just scored. Okay. On the six and the six and a fourth inch side. Trying to stay on camera here. Want to make sure it's lined up. And I'll go ahead and score the other one also. Not score, burnish, sorry. I use those words interchangeably when I shouldn't. Make sure they're lined up real good on the sides. Okay. So here's my one fourth inch gusset. Now I'm going to go back to scoring. And now I'm going to place this folded up against the edge of my score pal. Okay. Get it all the way in there. And then I'm going to score at six and then six and a fourth again. Six and six and a fourth. Okay. And that's all we have to do for that one. So I'm going to burnish. I'm going to make sure everything is lined up because sometimes you get off just a hair and we want it to line up at the top and the bottom. So I want to make sure that these sides line up. So I'll, that's what I mean when I have to adjust sometimes a little bit. So when I see if I look at that, it's off a little bit. So I want to just manipulate it so that it lines up nice and neat. Got that one and now I want to make sure this one. Okay. I was off a little bit, so make sure you double check the sides. So now I have my one fourth gusset and see how my seam now, I'm going to add a little bit of glue here. I see a little bit of opening, so I'll add some glue. So now I have that um, seam in the center back. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's the base. Pretty stinking easy so far. Um, let's do some, uh, let's do our flaps. Okay, you're going to need two pieces that are six by six and three eighths. And on the three eighths inch, uh, the six and three eighths inch side, we're going to score at one half. Okay, so you can freeze that if you need to. So let's move the mat off and do the scoring. So I want my six and three eighths across the top and score at one half. Okay, same way on the other one, six and three eighths on the top, score at one half. Let's go ahead and burnish those. There's one. And two. So we'll have like so on the book and then it'll open to the left and then it'll open to the right. Fabulous. Let's move those to the side and let's do some pockets. Now you have a total of three pockets. Two of them are going to measure the same, but the one in the center, you want to cut a hair shorter because when you flip over those sides, you don't want any buckling. So let's do the left and the right first. You're going to need two at five by seven. And we're going to score on three sides to um, make our pocket. Let me 
put my pin in my glue. Okay. So we want to put the seven inch side across the top. That's the seven inches. And we're going to score at one half. We're going to score at six and a half. Then we turn it so that the five inch side is across the top. And we're going to score at one half. And on the second one, we'll do the same thing. Seven inches across the top. Score at one half. Oop, I got too ahead of myself. Uh, six and a half. Turn it to the five inch side across the top. Score at a half. Before I do my um, burnishing, I am gonna cut out these bottom corners so that it gets rid of some bulk. I don't cut a perfect corner, I cut at an angle. So I'm gonna cut at an angle from this line and I'll cut at an angle right here. Now some people go straight across, I'm not, I don't trust myself. So I just snip at an angle, turn it, snip at an angle and I have a corner. Do that with the other one. I got new scissors and boy are they super duper sharp. I love them. It's the Cutter Bees. I see everybody using them. I've always used the Fiskars and I really, I, I like these too. I've never had a problem with them. But after using these for a long time and then trying these, way sharper. So that is awesome. I just could be because mine are old and they need to be sharpened, but I notice a huge difference. Okay, next one. Cut out the bottom corners. both sides at an angle from that square. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and burnish. All three sides. And then I am gonna be using my envelope punch board to notch out a centerpiece. If you don't have an envelope punch, bar, um, punch board, you can use a circle punch or you don't even have to put a notch, so it's up to you. Okay, so let me grab my board. Okay, now this pocket with the flaps folded underneath is six inches long. Okay, six inches. So what I want to do is I want to place it with the flap. It's folded over. I want to go to the three inch over here on the, my left and I'm going to punch. And that's how I get that uh, nice and centered. So then the second one with my flaps folded underneath here, go to the three inch and punch. Okay. Let's do the third pocket. And this one is a little bit smaller just by a hair. So this is five by six and seven eighths. And even after we cut it and fold it, you may have to, you know, check it in your book to make sure it doesn't buckle. But this is what worked for me. So um, let's go ahead and score this the same way we did the other one. We're going to put six and seven eighths across the top. Score at one half inch. Now this time I'm going to turn it so that the five inch is at the top and I'm going to score at a half inch. And then I'm going to turn it one more time back to the seven inches across the top and do one half inch. Okay. Go ahead and cut out your corners at an angle. And I'm going to go ahead and burnish while I'm at it. All three sides. And I am going to put the notch in this one too, but this time I can't go at the three. I have to go a hair shorter. 
because this measures five and seven eighths. So three inches, I want it between the three and the two and seven eighths. So I'm just moving it down like a sixteenth of an inch. So it's, I don't know if you can see that. So my three inches marked and my seven eighths, I'm gonna move it in between those two. So it's not much difference, but that'll give us just what we need. And punch, okay? Now, because we already have our we're getting all the paper cut and stuff. Let's go ahead and do our last piece, which is going to be our envelope box. And that's going to measure an uh, 11 by 11. Okay, and you just need one. And again, if I only know how to make this with the envelope punch board. So I'm gonna apologize if you don't have one. Uh, you might have to fake it or make something else. <laughs> so uh, let's bring over the punch board. Okay, and this is to fit a six by six. So what I did was I, did, my is, mine is off. Here's what I did, where's my phone? I don't know if you have this. Oh shoot, hold on. Um, I have the envelope generator on my phone. And so I typed in six inches for the card width and six inches for the card height and it told me I needed a nine and three fourths inch square. Now because I want um, a box I added one and a fourth to that so nine and three fourths and one and one fourth is eleven so that's where I got the eleven by eleven. Now the punch guide says to punch at four and seven eighths. Here I'm going to add one eighth and punch at five okay and then I'll move it over an inch and punch at six. So I hope that's clear. <laughs> um, so, hope you can see. Um, I'm going to start at five. And I'm going to punch. And I'm going to score along that line. Now it's not going to go all the way to the edge, but it'll go pretty close and that's, it'll still work. Now, I don't have a six inch on my scoreboard or my uh, envelope punch board. So this is at the five inch. I know I need to move it down one inch. So I'm just gonna put a little tick mark on my four inch and I'm gonna move that tick mark to the five. So I know I've moved it down one inch and I'm gonna go ahead and punch and score. Okay. So now you don't need to worry about the measurements at the top. I'm going to turn it and line up the blue thing that pokes out here, line it up with the first line, punch, and score. And again, it won't go all the way to the edge, but that's going to be fine. Move it over to the next line, punch, score, okay, turn it, line it up with the first score line and go ahead and follow that line down and score it again it won't go all the way to the end no problem move it to the second punch score and one more time move it around once go ahead and punch and score and again, it's not going to go all the way to the end. Move it over to the last one here. And score. I am going to go ahead and round the corners. So I'm going to turn this around. And I'm just going to put this in and punch. all my corners. And man, that's kind of hard to punch right now. I don't know why. Okay. Oh, that doesn't look good. Hold on. Much better. Okay. So that's it for the punch board. Let's go ahead 
and let me zoom out so you can see maybe that's part of the issue okay let's burnish put this away this one away I have so many repeat tools it's not even funny okay and now the second one go ahead and do that to all four sides burnish two down a two to go last one Okay, so um, this would be a good time to put your paper uh, on this main piece right here uh, if you're going to cover it. You can put it on at the end, but I thought it was just easier to put it on before. So you might want to pick, um, this should measure, mm, I don't even remember. This measures about six and a half by six and a half. So you're going to want to cut, I would go uh, six and three eighths by six and three eighths inch square and glue it on. Okay. I'm going to do it later just to save time on the video. So I'm going to flip it over and we have some cutting to do. Let's go ahead and cut out the square in the bottom right and the square on the bottom left and remove those. Now you do not remove them on the other side. Okay, so now let's turn it around and we have those other squares. We are going to cut just one side to make a flap. I'm going to turn it the opposite direction and turn it. Okay, so you can see now we have some flaps. So what we're going to do is fold the two sides in and bring up the bottom and there is going to, that's going to form our envelope. Okay. And that's going to come down. So this is kind of tricky for the gluing. Um, you can use score tape. I'm trying to decide what's going to be. I think I'm going to use score tape. Let's go ahead and use one fourth inch score tape. And you're going to place it along this bottom right here. And the bottom piece over here on the right. Now we also want to put a little bit of, I'm going to use glue for this one. Nothing like using a variety of adhesives. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue here. And I'm going to bring that up. And just stick it together. Give it some time to stick. Okay, and let's do the other one. Put put some glue on the tab. 
bring it up and fold that over and hold it in the corner. Give it some time to dry. Okay, so now we're just um, going to put the two sides down and bring up the bottom. And then I'm going to turn it upside down. I think I'm going to use my new handy dandy. Will that fit in there? Yes. My putty knife. Okay. Take off your backing. And bring it up. And I'm going to stick this in there and just make sure that it's staying down. Use your hand too if you need to. And I'm going to put just, I didn't put the score tape all the way to the end and that bothers me so I'm just going to put a dab of glue in that corner and I'm going to do it on the other corner too down here on the underneath side I'll put it just a dab of glue okay all right so there's your envelope it has a one inch side you should have this covered. If you want to cover the sides and the back, I'm not really sure how you'd cover the back. You'd have to do some finagling, finagling uh, with your paper. But And then I just did, uh, you could take like a circle punch, but not glue it all the way down so you can tuck this underneath. Like that. Okay. Alrighty, let's move that to the side. We are done with the envelope. You can decorate it however you like. Let's put together our book. So let's grab the base that is 18 and a half inches long that we scored. Okay, and we are going to place the two flaps down first. So find your two flaps that were six by six and three eighths that you scored at um, one half inch on the six and three eighths inch side. Now you're gonna wanna lay them down next to the score and you wanna make sure that you don't, it doesn't overlap and it doesn't so we're good okay so I'm gonna place some glue on that one half inch okay and I'm gonna turn this so it's easier for me to work with I'm gonna place it right close to the score line the one that um, Hold on, let me see. Maybe you can see that better. Ew, not that. Get me some clarity here. Oh, for cream. Oh, Hold on, sorry. I do this every time. Okay. And I'm gonna stick this right up against the score line, but not over it. And I want to make sure I line it up at the top and the bottom. Okay. Now, this is going to drive me nuts. So I'm going to do some trimming. It's over just, can you see that? Just a hair. Mm -mm, can't live with that. So I'm going to trim. And if that doesn't bother you, then, but mine's a hair off. And I mean just a hair. Man, I love these scissors. Much better, okay. And now as we put on the other side, we're gonna place it underneath here and line it up 
up against that score line. Now make sure that it fits. Now if it doesn't, you're going to have to do some trimming. So let's see. So that folds okay. And that's going to work. Okay. Fabulous. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on. And line it up against the score line. Line it up with the top and bottom and push down. No, nope, no. Nope. See? Okay. Now let's do some side pockets. Um, let's see the side pockets. These were the two that, um, that were five by seven. We scored on three sides. We're going to place those going sideways. Okay. They don't go this way. I mean, if you want them to go this way, you can, but I do it. I did it sideways. And we are going to go right up to the score line, but not over. Make sure the top and the bottom line up. And let's do some gluing. I do the sides first. And then I'll bring up the bottom. I'm not in camera, sorry. I'm a kind of a messy gluer, I just decided. Okay. Pinch the two sides in, bring up the bottom. Let's lay it on right up against. Ugh, I got it all over my finger. Good. Okay, I gotta get this glue off my hand. And I'm gonna go ahead and push down with my. Teflon bone folder. Make sure it's down real good. And again, double check. Yep, everything folds fine. Okay. Open the right hand door. Do the same thing. This time I'm going to turn it this way just so it's easier for me. I think you can still see if I do that. I think. Okay. my glue or your whatever you use whatever you know you might use the red back tape or score tape I used to use score tape for everything but not so much anymore I think this is more economical and it is a great firm hold doesn't wrinkle your papers it's magic glue okay and we want it to be so that the um, cutout faces out. Right up against the score line, but not over. Press down real good. Take off my stickies. Okay, so now the only thing we have left is the middle pocket, and that one was a little bit shorter. Oh man! You know what? I glued this one on it. It looks like that's. I wonder if I can get this off. Hold on. I think I used the center. I did. I used the center pocket for my right hand side. Let me move that and put this one down. This is. Let me see if this is a better fit. Yep, this is the one I was supposed to use. All right, let me get myself organized here and fix my mistake. You know, I think I did that on my original one too. I think I grabbed the middle pocket and put it on the side and I was too late to fix it. And I'll be darned if I didn't do the same thing again, even with the sticky notes on there to label them. Oh well, at least I caught it. Okay.
try that again. Oh yeah, that's what I did. There's Before I could see a little bit of paper sticking out over here, now I can't. I'm going to push down real good. Okay, now hopefully this one will fit in the center nice and neat. And I'm going to check that I can close the doors. And it's going to be close. I might have to... Let's see. Uh, it's, I'm going to have to make an adjustment. You may have to also, you want to make sure that you fold it. When you fold in the sides, you don't have any buckling. And I think I would have. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to push the side in a hair. Like barely anything. And let's see if that does the trick. You can put it back in your scoreboard and rescore it. Totally up to you. Let's see if that does it. Yep, that's all it took was just a little bit of moving one side in. So check, check, check. You don't want buckling. At least I don't. You want your book to lay as flat as possible. All right, almost done here. Now I don't show the matting. To me, that's boring to watch somebody glue pa decorative paper on. But I am going to show you one thing so you don't make a mistake when you're trying to put your seam binding in or your closure for the book. Yep, perfect. Okay, let's just press that down. And I see just a hair that I need to trim. Okay. All right. Fabulous. And there's your little booklet that you can decorate. And I'll show you mine again. Um, I'll put a still picture up of this one when I'm done with it. But here is the booklet. And so I used a seam binding closure. So if that's how you're going to do your closure, you know, really when you look at it, it stays closed. So you don't have to put a closure on if you don't want to. I, it does not flap. I mean, it's the paper is heavy enough that it weighs it down. I did just in case. Um, so what you do is, well, let me show you. So you find the back. Okay, so this is the back of my book. I'm gonna take a piece of seam binding And I'm going to glue it down and then I put my decorative paper on top. Okay, so you want to make sure you give yourself enough seam binding that you can come over and tie it. Okay, so this would be it's probably too long the way I have it. But make sure you put this down first on the back. Then you put your decorative paper on. Alright, so that is slick, easy, cute. Um, I will, like I said, I'll decorate this one and I'll show you what this one looks like. I'm going to do a better job of the egg. Um, that egg is again by Blue Fern and oof, I'm going to do a better job. That one I don't like. Um, so where did I put that egg? Just to show you how intricate it is. Oh, there it is. So this is what I will put on the cover of my envelope. But I'm going to paint it and then put some sparkle, some glitter uh, on the top. I have some different glitter. I might use the Imagine Ink uh, by Blue Fern. This is embossing powder. I might do that. Um, I also have these little glass beads. I might incorporate that. I don't know. We'll just have to see. So hopefully this was a quick and easy project. Something that you might send to a, a relative or a friend on for Easter. Um, I will be back to show you my finished product. 
So before I show you the finished one that I just got done um, working on, I went back and tried to fix this egg that's been driving me bonkers. And I did put some flowers on it and I had some little pink rhinestone things. So that helped a little bit, but yeah, see, it's okay. I can live with it now that I have a little something, something on it. So anyway, there's that first one that I went through already. So here is the second one that I just finished. Um, put a sticker on a banner. It says Easter wishes and bunny kisses. And I had a butterfly that was a pink color. And then I went ahead and used glitter. I used the blue fern glitter. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm happy with that egg. Um, and so I did two layers of paper. And I'm happy with, and I could actually write to who it is for right there. Um, so when you open this one, here is the, where'd it go? The book, oh, it's upside down, that I finished for. This one's probably for my daughter. The other one's probably for my son. Um, this one has a little bird, like a dove in the corner, but the flowers match the flowers on the front. So I just put that up in the corner. And then I had a blue fern flower and some leaves, white leaves in my stash. So um, took what well, I cut apart and layered it on two different colors of paper. So this one is pretty much as like the other one. I feel like I need something here just to give it some, I mean, it's kind of a plain page now that I look at it. So I'll have to look through my stickers and see if there's something I can put here. Um, and then it has, again, it has the pullout um, for pictures. Left this plain. Here's the right hand side. I think the reason why it looks so plain to me is because these are words instead of pictures and the other one had pictures. Put the tags in there with the yellow seam binding at the top. This one has the word chocolate on it. So this one I kind of kept plain. I added some of this really pretty ribbon from the store that uh, matches real well. And then this time I put the pockets on the bottom instead of the side. And I love this paper with the banner. Put a cut apart in there. Same over here, put the uh, pocket on the bottom instead. Put a pocket here and added a cut apart. It says here comes Peter Cottontail. Um, and then another um, mat here. So it's pretty similar. Um, again, you can put something behind here. That's a belly band. So um, I'm happy with how it turned out, except for oh, I'm going to have to put something here, whether it's a butterfly, a rabbit, or something. Um, and then it closes up, ties, and fits back into the box. So hopefully you'll find that this is an easy project, a fast project. It doesn't have to be just for Easter. Um, again, most of the things that I use came from Country Craft Creations. I hope that you come back and visit my channel again. I have tutorials and uh, product hauls. And um, please subscribe if you haven't already. So thank you so much and have a great evening.